You've probably heard of El Nino and La Nina before. They mean little boy and little girl in Spanish, and collectively they make up the ENSO cycle, which stands for El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle. This cycle describes abnormally warm and cool ocean temperatures in the eastern tropical Pacific. The cycle is natural and El Nino is the warm phase of the cycle, while La Nina is the cold phase of the cycle. We get El Nino and La Nina episodes every three to five years, and El Nino happens more often than La Nina. They may last as little as nine months, about as long as it takes an actual little boy or girl to develop before being born, or as long as a couple years. They usually form in the summer between June and August, get strongest around December, and then wither away between May and July of the next year. If you've ever been in the Pacific Ocean along the west coast of the U.S., you know that this water is very cold. This is because the winds along the equator in the Pacific blow from east to west, pushing the warm surface waters along with it. This leaves behind cooler water in the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. During an El Nino event, the winds blowing east to west are not as strong as normal, so a lot of that warmer water gets left in the eastern part of the ocean. What's really interesting is that as the water gets warmer, it weakens the winds even more, which then leaves more warm water in the eastern part of the Pacific, which then weakens the winds even more, and we get a self-perpetuating cycle. So what stops this cycle? Well, as El Nino grows large enough to reach the middle of the ocean, it creates Rossby waves. These are similar to tidal waves where large amounts of water move in the same direction toward land. In a Rossby wave, the top part of this massive ocean wave moves really slowly in one direction, and the bottom part of the wave moves in the other direction. How slowly does this wave move? About a hundred times slower than a walking pace. It takes months for Rossby waves to reach shore, and when they do, they get bounced back towards the ocean again. This slow-moving return wave from shore is called a Kelvin wave, and it brings enough cool water with it to cancel out the warming from the El Nino event. If enough cool water tags along with the Kelvin wave, we may get a La Nina event. For this reason, La Nina often follows an El Nino, but this isn't always true. Though we tend to think of El Nino and La Nina as brother and sister, La Nina can occur independently. If those winds from before grow stronger instead of weaker, we get the opposite result. Colder waters are more prevalent in the eastern Pacific Ocean, and we get La Nina instead of El Nino. Though they occur in the ocean, the effects of El Nino and La Nina are not confined to this space. And, just as this brother and sister duo have opposite effects on water temperature, they also have opposite effects on weather patterns on land. Because both events tend to build to their peaks during the winter months, this is usually when we see the greatest effects. In the U.S., La Nina winters create drier conditions in the southwest, wetter conditions in the northwest, and very cold conditions in the northeast. El Nino produces the opposite effect, wetter conditions in the southwest, drier conditions in the northwest, and stormy, snowy weather in the northeast. Other parts of the world, especially in the tropics of the Pacific, are also greatly affected by ENSO cycles. During La Nina, Australia and Indonesia are more likely to experience drought, but will have heavier than normal rainfall during El Nino. Just like children, both El Nino and La Nina are complex, and their processes are not fully understood. However, scientists do have some tools available to help predict these impactful events. While prediction is not easy, it is important because El Nino and La Nina affect people all over the world when they occur. Predicting the effects of ENSO cycles, such as cold spells, drought, heavy rains, severe snowstorms, and other weather changes, can help people plan and prepare. This may not only save lives, but also prevent the loss of municipal funds, crops, and livelihoods. Little boy and little girl, El Nino and La Nina are the ocean's children. They're part of the overall ENSO cycle, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle. The El Nino part of the cycle is the unusual warming of the eastern Pacific Ocean, and La Nina is the opposite, the unusual cooling of this part of the Pacific. Both are naturally occurring events that happen about every three to five years. 
They normally last about as long as it takes a real little boy or girl to grow in the womb, so about nine months, but they can last as long as a few years. And just like children, the majority of their time present is about that of a typical school year, beginning around August, peaking in December, and ending around May. El Nino develops when the winds that normally blow warm Pacific surface waters from east to west weaken. This allows the warm waters to stay in the eastern part of the ocean, which then weakens the winds even more, and the cycle continues like this until stopped by an outside force, such as a Kelvin wave. Kelvin waves result from Rossby waves, which are giant, slow-moving waves heading toward land. The return wave bounced back from shore is the Kelvin wave, which carries cooler water and cancels out the warm water from the El Nino. Just like a sister, La Nina acts opposite to her brother. La Nina is when the winds blowing across the tropical Pacific strengthen, which creates cooler than normal surface waters in the eastern Pacific. She may follow after her brother if the Kelvin waves bring too much cold water back with them, or she may occur independently. Both parts of the ENSO cycle have effects on land as well as water. In the U.S., La Nina winter conditions will be drier in the southwest, wetter in the northwest, and colder in the northeast. But the opposite is true for El Nino. Winter conditions will be wetter in the southwest, drier in the northwest, and stormy and snowy in the northeast. La Nina creates conditions similar to the southwest along the tropical Pacific, and places like Australia and Indonesia tend to experience extreme drought. El Nino rains down heavy on these areas, creating wetter than normal conditions as it cycles through.